made up of complex underground tunnels with several sleeping chambers and around 20 different entrances. They're the safest place to hide vulnerable pups. But no burrow is 100% predator-proof. Mole snakes often seek shade from the sun underground. In an unguarded burrow, pups can easily fall victim. It's for this very reason Makey's gang rarely leave their young unattended. While the rest of the family fill their bellies, the on-duty babysitter has to forego eating all day to look after the young. Some subordinate females go one step further, providing milk for the dominant pair's pups. Meerkats can do this even if they've never given birth. Sharing the task of raising young gives Makey the best chance of increasing the clan's numbers. If things go well, she may have as many as four litters this year. While Clarice waits for the hours to while away, the next door neighbors are only just getting up. Ground squirrels live side by side with meerkats, often occupying the same territories and occasionally sharing the same burrows. This rowdy bunch may be hyper, but they're completely harmless to meerkats. As vegetarians, they're neither a threat nor competition for the gang. In fact, they provide quite a useful service. When they're not being sidetracked, ground squirrels help to build burrows. They do the groundwork, and the meerkats move in. But for now, domestic duties seem to be the furthest thing from their minds. Distracted by the neighbor's high jinx, Clarice fails to notice the approach of a rival meerkat. This is a rover, a subordinate male who's left his family group in pursuit of unrelated females. In layman's terms, rovers are the undeniable Don Juans of the desert. But roving is a risky business. To find females in neighboring groups, subordinate males often have to travel across rival territories alone. As he bravely sidles up towards the burrow, the rover leaves his unique calling card. Scent marking is the meerkat's way of advertising their presence and staking out territory. Glands at the base of the tail excrete a pungent secretion, which lingers long after the intruder has left. Most importantly, it tells the female there's an unrelated male in the area. All his advertising pays off. Clarice gets the message loud and clear. Abandoning her duties, she leaves the precious pups unguarded. While the couple get better acquainted, unbeknownst to them, trouble is heading their way. A black-backed jackal has entered the group's territory. Though jackals get much of their food from scavenging, they're also skilled hunters and pose one of the deadliest threats to meerkats. If this predator picks up the pair's scent or that of the pups, Clarice's date could end in disaster. The jackal edges closer to the clan's den. Half a kilometer away, the rest of the family are completely oblivious to the drama unfolding at their burrow. Makey has led them to an area full of their favorite foods, insects, lizards, and scorpions. Today, frogs are on the menu. The family are in no rush to get home. With the jackal dangerously close to the den, there's nothing Clarice can do to protect the pups now. This time, the wayward babysitter catches a lucky break. The jackal passes by, and the burrow remains undiscovered for now. With the danger past, 
The roving male wastes little time picking up where the couple left off. But somehow, the moment has passed. The gang returns from hunting. Meeting the in-laws is a tricky affair at the best of times, but this first encounter is far from ideal. Despite Clarice's willingness to entertain her guest, groups rarely tolerate such trespassers. Dominant male Bruce leads the charge. Raising their tails and kicking out their back legs, the clan launch into what is known as a war dance. Meerkats will fight to the death if necessary to protect their patch. For Bruce, the stakes are especially high. He needs to defend his position as top male. The intruder seen off, Bruce lays down his own scent. Re-establishing the burrow as his property and sending his own strong message. Rovers are not welcome here. Mekey hurries below ground to check on the pups. With her sister out of sight, Clarice attempts to slip back to the burrow under the radar. Carrying the scent of a rival male could spell trouble, but fortunately for her, Mekey is below ground tending to her pups. For now, Clarice has got away with it, but if she falls pregnant, Things will be very different. Two weeks later, the dry season begins to transform the desert. In the shifting sands of the Namib, fortunes are changing. As the desert slowly reclaims land previously given over to green grasses, the inhabitants are finding it increasingly difficult to source enough food to survive. For the Meerkat clan, that challenge is only just beginning. But for now, they have something to celebrate. Makey's pups are about to make their way above ground for the first time. Females can have up to seven pups in a litter, but this time the family are welcoming three new arrivals. Two brothers, Jack and Joe, and their little sister Lily take their place in the family. It's both an exciting and anxious time for the group. Pups this size can attract the wrong sort of attention. The harsh reality is one in every four pups will not make it to adulthood. At just three weeks old, the young are blissfully unaware of the dangers that surround them. For now, they rely solely on the adults for their protection and food. While the others keep watch, Makey gives her youngsters a final feed of milk before leading the gang off for their daily forage. It's vital she regains the weight she lost after her 70-day pregnancy. Her pups are still too small to join the main group on the hunt. The young will remain at the burrow for another week until they're strong enough to keep up with the adults. Today, it's the turn of Bruce to babysit. The rest of the clan set off to the eastern edge of their range. Each day they forage in a different patch to allow previously plundered land to regenerate. The clan spend up to eight hours hunting every day. Their powerful sense of smell and acute hearing enable them to find prey scuttling beneath the sand. Meerkats are perfectly designed for digging. They have rigid two centimeter long claws which act like shovels. A second transparent eyelid works like a windscreen wiper to keep their eyes from getting clogged. Adults regularly shift their own body weight in sand every 20 seconds to find a meal. While most have their heads buried in the sand, 
One member of the gang usually scans the surrounding area for danger. Dark patches around their eyes work like sunglasses to reduce the glare of the African sun. Adults have over 30 different calls, each with their own meaning. The steady bleep of the sentinel's call reassures the rest of the clan the coast is clear. In an aerial emergency, meerkats will often go to ground, taking refuge in one of the countless bolt holes in their territory. All the adults have detailed knowledge of the precise location of up to a thousand of these hideouts. The group will rarely stray more than 60 meters from a bolt pole at any time. Knowing where to hide from an aerial attacker can mean the difference between life and death. But underground shelters can't safeguard against all predators. 